Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about something pretty uh, pretty out there, something a little different for the channel. I'm just going to be going over my favorite fight scene in all of 40k. It's uh, characters and events that you might not expect from someone like me that mostly does, you know, Xeno stuff. And if I'm doing anything like Space Marine, it's going to be World Eaters. Yet this is a fight scene about a faction I don't think I've ever covered on the channel, ever talked about on the channel. Um, but it really resonated with me as being like the coolest, most epic uh, battle I think I've ever seen. At least a duel between two characters. So uh, stay tuned to find out what that is. And uh, we'll get talking about that right now. Now, before we get started, uh, we do just got to really quickly shout out the channel sponsor, Lord of Skulls. Go check them out for all of your World Eaters needs. They make awesome bits. You can either buy the, the files directly from him, or you can buy the bits, and he sends them out in these awesome packages, especially the new ones that are made to look like your favorite breakfast cereal box, which I think is just hilarious. Um, as always, uh, go check them out. They make all this possible, especially the Warhound Titan videos, which if you haven't seen those yet, what are you even doing? It's the coolest project on the internet right now. I mean, I'm not biased. Um, but yeah, so into the video. Who we're talking about today is Zarl. I might be saying that slightly right. Starts with an X, hard to say. From the Night Lords Legion, of all things. Never even spoken of them. But if you're a fan of 40k, you may have heard that the Night Lords Omnibus is some of the best 40k books you can read, especially some of the best Trader Space Marine books. It really humanizes what would otherwise be one of the most brutal, vicious, and just downright evil Space Marine Legions in the setting. That, of course, being the Night Lords. Um, and you get to really see behind the scenes the, the, the better aspects of their characters and, uh, you know, what drives them. Um, and I'm not, it doesn't make them into good guys, but you can see their point of view certainly a lot better. Um, and so Zaro in particular is, he's not nearly as like sadistic and like, you know, mustache twirlingly evil as, uh, some of, some other Chaos Space Marines you see, certainly not things like Abaddon. Um, you know, he is a warrior first and foremost, and he's just really kind of disillusioned with the whole thing. He's very blunt, very honest. He does not support chaos and the warp and demons in any way. He thinks all that is bullshit, and he thinks that their war is with the Imperium that betrayed them, in his opinion. And as you read the books, you realize that's kind of not entirely wrong. Um, and, uh, but, you know, that's kind of him in a nutshell. He's, he's as far as the Night Lord goes fairly honorable straightforward warrior um and yeah so what actually ends up happening is you have this little war band of night lords that has gone out and is and they're terrorizing a planet um we don't need to get into the whole backstory behind it but basically it's their old home world that has now been settled by the imperium the imperium they basically feel the imperium's like forgotten about them like they're so insignificant they don't even care about them anymore and that's just insulting so they go we're going to send a message that the imperium is never going to forget and they basically skin alive the entire population of this planet, which is not that huge, but it's like 5, 10 million people, something like that. Just skin them all alive, and they like channel the psychic backlash of that into the warp and just fuck with everything. Like, it's it's this pretty good plan, pretty solid plan. Um, but so in retaliation to this attack, the local space marine um, chapter that guards that that region of space is an ultramarine second founding chapter or third founding chapter second or third called the genesis marines and um so basically while the the night lords are fucking around doing their thing their ship gets boarded and it's a desperate battle because even though their ship is technically a lot better than the Gen genesis space marine ship they're caught off guard the genesis and you see this a lot where generally the newer marines don't have the experience but because they're funded by the whole Imperium, they've got that infrastructure, their gear is better, you know, they're not constantly running out of ammo, their armor's not patchwork, so, like, they have better stuff and in better discipline in a lot of cases versus what's kind of like a ragtag, barely held together crew of, of veteran Chaos Marines or, or, you know, Heretic Marines in this case. So the scene sets up where the rest of Zarl's squad and his friends, including the famous uh, Talos Valkorin, who is the uh, the Night Lord's prophet, are trying to hold a hallway um, against the advancing Genesis Marines. Uh, they're fairly evenly matched. You know, they're shoot trading back and forth. Um, I believe there is four of the Night Lords at this point. So you've got Talos, um, you've got uh, Uzas, Syrian, and Mercutian. 
but then a champion of the Genesis Marines arrive. And so we're talking, he's got like really advanced relic armor, better than, you know, more legit than their armor, Storm Shield Thunder Hammer. And so just like in tabletop, imagine if you were in tabletop, you're playing, you've got a squad of what's effectively tactical Marines or like your standard Chaos Space Marines, so just like four of them, versus a, you know, company champion with Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield. It's not going to be a good fight. He's going to, you know, each hit, boom, dead, boom, dead, boom, dead. So in typical Night Lord's fashion, they're, you know, their their whole thing is like they are good fighters, but they are not that honorable. Like they will win at all costs. They're not afraid to fight dirty, to use underhanded, dishonorable tactics. They're like, holy fuck, like we were just barely holding this hallway and now this freaking ding dong's coming down here with a, you know, chanting to the emperor with a thunder hammer and a storm shield. Like, what the fuck are we going to do about this? Like the, you know, bolts are just pinging off them. So in desperation, all four of them charge him and they're like actually tackle him over basically. And they're just trying to like, just do anything they can to hurt this guy. But his armor's better, his gear's better. And like he touches you with the thunder hammer and it messes them up badly. So he basically ends up one by one incapacitating each of them like badly. Like you get one one glancing hit and thing, they're like into the wall, armor cracked, broken, almost dead. And then just when all hope seems lost, you see Zarl, who had been fighting other guys at that point, finally come down the hall and see what's going on. Zarl is a much better fighter than his squad mates. He would be more like a, a chaos champion or, uh, you know, not a lord, but, um, you know, maybe if on the tabletop, maybe he'd be more like a master of executions kind of guy. Like he's a really good duelist compared to the other guys, which would be more like normal standard chaos Marines. Um, so I think he, he duel, he fights his way through two or three of the remaining, uh, normal Genesis Marines. And so now the two champions square up. And Zarl likes to use a two-handed uh, chain blade, which is usually called like an eviscerator. Um, and so he actually switches that to one hand and then kicks up uh, Uzas's chain axe, which was laying on the floor because he's a freaking crumpled mess on the wall. So he's dual wielding two chain weapons versus a champion with a thunder hammer and a storm shield. And they're going back and forth, back and forth. They're doing, they're doing, doing. They're both injuring each other, but like just a glancing tap from the thunder hammer is cracking his armor. His, you know, he's feeling his arms going numb. You know, he does, he manages to get him a couple times. Eventually, the teeth on the chain axe are getting broken and they're flying everywhere because he's, you know, he's hitting a shield. He's hitting better armor, so he discards that and then he he kicks up uh, Talos's uh, legendary stolen power sword. So now he's got a power sword. He's dual wielding a power sword and a two-handed chain blade. And they're still going at it, and they just can't, he, they can't kill each other, but they're both, he ends up stabbing the, uh, the chapter master, and again, I think he got, he, his whole arm, like, is dead, basically, one of them, um, they're pretty evenly matched, and he knows, okay, I gotta finish this, and they kind of, they part ways, they step back a little bit, and he does something unexpected, he takes his helmet off, and you would think, this is some, this is some silliness here, like, he's about to get, killed obviously like why would you take your helmet off this is like you need all the armor you can get here at this point buddy he does the most night lord of night lord moves he ends up they end up locked together um i forget if he has him stabbed again at that point but they're they're locked together he he locks them together and and they're both you know struggling against each other and then he starts to headbutt the uh genesis marine champion with his bare head he hits him again and again and again, and he's splitting his own skull open. His blood is sheeting down his face. He is horrifically injuring himself against this Marine's helmet. He's doing it so hard, he's cracking the other guy's head back who's wearing the helmet. And then finally, he hears the sound he's been waiting for. He hears the eye lens of the, the uh, Genesis Marine champion's helmet crack and break. And that was the moment he was waiting for. And he uses something that you never see Marines use, but of course a Night Lord would do this to win a duel. He broke the guy's eye lens so that he could then spit acid into the eye hole and blind him. Never seen that done before. I thought that was so smart and so sneaky and the most Night Lord shit you've ever seen. It's like, fuck, I cannot win this duel. This guy just won't die. I've stabbed him. I've cut him. I'm dying. 
I'm going to take my helmet off so that then when I'm almost killing myself headbutting this guy, I can spit acid into his eye hole and blind him. And that allows Uzas to finally kill him and save his friends. Uzas, or not Uzas, Zarl, sorry, I mixed the two up. Uh, Zarl then finally succumbs to his wounds in his friend's arms. Talos ends up getting back up just to catch him in time for him to die, basically. And he dies in probably the most glorious Night Lord, like for a Night Lord, one of the best ways they could die. You know, like, he wasn't a coward. He went out fighting. He went out fighting a fight that he had, you know, there was a chance that he could lose. That's a theme in the books is like, what are we even fighting for anymore? We're just going after weak targets. We are, nobody cares about us anymore. We're not feared in the galaxy. We're so like insignificant and we're just, you know, dragging this on and barely surviving and not really achieving anything. He went out like a warrior, like a boss, doing something meaningful. He saved his friends. It was a fight. It was a worthy, honorable fight. Well, it was worthy and honorable until he won in a kind of a cheating way, but uh, most Marines can spit acid and they just don't use it because, you know, usually they'd be wearing a helmet anyway, but I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was really well written and uh, what an epic send off to one of the most epic characters. And uh, yeah, basically just one of the many reasons to love the Night Lords from reading those books. If you guys get the chance, make sure you check them out. Uh, they are amazing. You won't regret it. Um, and, uh, they're a lot of fun to read about. So that was just my little, my little random spiel for today about maybe a really cool fight, um, that you haven't heard of. A lot of people talk about those books, but they don't talk about that fight scene, uh, near the end of the book. It's, it's fucking badass. I mean, all those Night Lords characters are really awesome, really well written, but, uh, that was one of my favorite scenes in it for sure. So, uh, that's all for today, guys. Just a quick video. Um, there's going to be more Titan stuff coming very soon. Steadily working away on that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not going to be too, too long before we're getting into like the grand reveal stage, you know, to go by Squidmar and his Titan videos. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. As always, if you want your name on that Titan, check out the Patreon. Everyone on Patreon will get their name added to the Titan and it's a great way to support the channel. It's only a dollar. Um, and yeah, so as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.